Hello everyone. This is Loveness Paradise TV and we have an amazing guest. Her name is Shanita King. She's an, a visual artist. She does yoga and she um, does graphic designing and she, she just has a lot of things in her. And she's a, just a, an, an amazing, blessed uh, spiritual being. So she's gonna tell us exactly what she's made of because she is full of all these colors, you know, what I usually call the colors of beauty. How are you doing, Sister uh, Shanita? I'm doing great. Thank um, you. Very grateful to be here. Yes, we are very, very happy to have you today. And uh, I can't wait to hear what you've got because what happened is, you know, just as I was on my journey, which I call my journey to loveness, you know, I'm journeying back to myself, as you know. Yes. You know, as we all know, we're all journeying back to ourselves. And even though we don't know, some we don't really know, but we are all <laughs> journeying back to ourselves. So, and during my journey to loveness, I happened to meet you. And this is actually today our first time meeting in person. Yes, yes. And uh, what a blessing. A <laughs> what a blessing. So, Sister, um, if you can tell us a little bit. We really, uh, today I just want to hear more about uh, your work, you know, uh, your artwork, what you love most. And, um, and, you know, you can tell us if there is struggles in there and tell us all, you know, because usually what I, I think what I believe in is that people sometimes, they have to be something pushing you mm -hmm. or something poking you a little bit and uh, to, to kind of emerge from that uh, thick mud right there. Yes. So, um, I was reading one of your articles on your website and I found out that um, you uh, do visual art yes. and uh, graphic designing and architecture. Can you actually tell me a little bit, your art background, all that? So um, art is something that I've been doing my entire life. Um, I don't ever remember a point in my life where I wasn't creating art. Um, it's just something that I've always been passionate about and it's always brought me joy since I was a little child. And also it was a way for me to just express myself in ways that I couldn't ar articulate with words. Um, so it's just been a really good resource for me to have. And as I've developed as a person, so has my artwork. Um, and it's taking on different shapes and meanings to me. Wonderful. Um, so how old were you when you started getting into really realizing that I'm actually doing this thing and I can start you know, putting it out for the people to see? Well, it's something um, that I, I've always done, just as far back as my memory takes me. Oh. Um, but as far as uh, displaying it in a public way, mm -hmm. um, I actually did not do that until I moved to Portland. Um, hmm. And so artwork has always been something, um, it allows me to be completely vulnerable and be really open. And for a while, that was something that I kept sacred to myself mm -hmm. and only wanted to share that with close friends and family members. Yes. Um, and so the expansion to p display it in a public way yeah. first took shape uh, through graphic design. Mm -hmm. um, and I did a lot of logo designs that were based upon original pieces of artwork of mine. Wonderful. And, and there, uh, so from being in architecture to being a graphic designer, um, that transition there, can, can, can you tell us a little bit more about that? Okay, um, yes. Uh, so my major in college was architectural drafting and design. Mm -hmm. And so for um, pretty much since I graduated college, I've been working with architecture firms, uh, doing design documents, doing color renderings, presentation drawings. Um, Cause I think architecture is beautiful and something that uh, interests me, but it was not a passion. And so, I always felt the need to keep that heart fire and that passion going. So um, artwork is something that I continued to do while I was working in the corporate setting. Oh, I see. And um, so art, so basically I had a friend come over to my house and mm -hmm. she saw a lot of my artwork that I had displayed in my house, in my house at the time. And she asked if I would design a logo for her studio oh, that she was about to open. Wow, is that how the graphic designing started? Yes, that's oh. actually how it started. I mean, you, you, it really didn't start that way. Yeah. You were already <laughs> doing, I guess, but. I was maybe? actually, no. Um, you I were just doing art. I was okay. just doing art. And uh, again, it was just something that I shared with friends and family. And how she saw it was she was a close friend of mine and that I welcomed into my home. 
and my housework was filled with my artwork. And um, when she asked me to do the logo for her yoga studio that was opening, um, I was very, um, I actually tried to talk her out of it um, because- You were scared. Yeah, I was very <laughs> scared. And, um, and at that point, I had already decided that, um, or just thought that that was something that was just gonna be a hobby for me. And that I was on this track, you know, with corporate America and with my career, and mm -hmm. this is what I'm going to do, and this is something that brings me joy and bliss, but yeah. it's just a hobby. And so um, I was very surprised that she asked me to do it, and and part of talking her out of it, I even offered names of other designers that oh. we both knew, and she was like, "No, you're a yogi. I really enjoy your artwork, mm -hmm. and I want you specifically to this to do this for me." was most a spiritual thing you mm -hmm. know that connection you just was afraid I mean uh, isn't it amazing that we are afraid to be big we are very it's so afraid sad. To be big. That, that fear is painful mm -hmm. I'm still fighting it myself yeah <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm making progress in that battle but I'm also yeah. fighting it and yeah. you know and just um, the vulnerability of expressing your artwork and showing it in a public way yes. you know because art is so subjective and I didn't know if I wanted to just make myself vulnerable in that way. Yeah. And so this was like a good launching pad for me to do that. And I actually showed her, um, so I did one piece of artwork for her. Mm -hmm. This has never happened again. Um, but the original piece of artwork that I designed for her logo yeah. was perfect. I never had to change one single thing. Wow, she was happy. She was happy. Oh my gosh. And she actually started crying, which made me cry. Oh, and Can we mention the name of the studio? Or yes. Is she okay with that? Yeah. yeah. Which, which uh, state? I know you moved from, can you tell us exactly, you moved from another state to here. Which, yes. Which state so was originally it? I'm from South Carolina, mm -hmm. um, but I spent about 10 years in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, and that's where the studio is located. Um, it's called Kali Yuga Yoga. Mm -hmm. And it's a great studio in East Nashville. It's nice. one of my, my so foundation base. So those Nashville. <laughs> Go visit it. <laughs> what is it called again? Kali Yuga Yoga. Kali Yuga Yoga yes. in Nashville. Yes. Okay. And um, yeah, I was just very, um, very surprised and very um, just appreciative and grateful that she was so receptive to my artwork. And then I was like, well, maybe, maybe I can do more of this. Yes. So. Yes. Um, I actually did at that point um, did a lot of volunteer work. Um, just to kind of get those creative juices flowing. So a lot of what was really interesting is um, a lot of my friends at that time were mm -hmm. starting out their own businesses, small businesses mm -hmm. in East Nashville neighborhood, particularly, and um, you know, bicycle studio, um, hair salon, nice. just different places. And so was I was able to you. work with my friends and we were able to help um, support each other in our businesses. Yes. And so those were my first clients. Were so you were designing logos for them mostly? Logos and then um, you know event posters, mm -hmm. just different marketing material. Um, I just wanted to be fearless and just kind of branch out and do different things. And um, I had another friend who um, had just opened up a restaurant and lounge and they were looking for different types of events. Mm -hmm. And I had never done this before, but I was like, well, I feel pretty confident that nice. I can organize art events. Wow. So uh, I started doing that, yeah. and um, that's something that I'm actually doing full time now as well Wonderful. with uh, some local venues uh, in awesome. Portland. But, but yeah, it just kind of, it just all took just, like just took off. And yeah. during the same time, I was still working at the architecture firm. Um, and to then, pay the bills, you, yes. you, know, you have to keep that, you know, to, yes. to nurture the one you really love, mm -hmm. following your actual uh, calling, huh? Yes. So, and then uh, you are doing uh, uh, gra and then for architecture to, to graphic design, and then from graphic designing to visual arts, mm -hmm. and then um, and then you worked also to do. Did we miss anything on the transition from graphic to visual, or we covered that? Um, so basically, um, while I was uh, living in Tennessee, mm -hmm. um, I was. So something interesting happened. Yes. Um, we had a recession. Um, so during the recession, um, the architecture firm that I was working for I actually got laid off, mm. and, along with hundreds of other people. Mm. And what is even more interesting about that is, so I got laid off in January. The what October, year is that? Um, I can't. Somewhere there, exactly. never mind. But the, <laughs> but the uh, 
was interesting is uh, the October before that, yes. I actually said to the universe and to my close friends that I wanted to really, I was like, life is so short. Um, I had achieved all the goals that I wanted to in corporate America. I had worked with the best companies that all the companies that I wanted to work to work for. Yes. Um, I'd received promotions and accolades and I'd won awards, but um, it was just not, not feeling and not, yeah, it just was not fueling my soul and feeding me in the way I needed to. So um, I was gaining a lot of uh, momentum, you know, spiritually, emotionally, and um, just getting inspired by the design projects I had been working on. Ah. And so... It, was this what led to you going to Omega or...? That was what, part of what? it. Okay. It was part of it. Um, so I got laid off mm -hmm. um, the same month that I said that I was going to leave. Yes. So the universe uh, kind of provided that for me because who knows if, um, you know, because there's a lot of fear yes. about leaving a job where there's financial security, where there's insurance and, you know, all the things that yeah, yeah, no. make life a little it's, easier. It's, and, I mean, it's it, it, it letting go. It's, mm -hmm. it's just hard to let go of anything. Yeah. And, but the truth, once, you know, we know now, some, mm -hmm. not everybody knows, but we know that if you let go, that, that doesn't make you happy. Yeah. There's something actually right there waiting for something you. Something better. And, mm -hmm. but we keep holding on these things and holding, and I see it happening with the relationships. I've been mm -hmm. in them too, you know? <laughs> I've been in many things and I, I, you keep holding. But the truth, you know, just mm -hmm. let go, you know? There's something way better that's gonna make you no worries or anything. So it's, it was the same thing. The universe was waiting for you to just, you know, Make, relax and yeah. say, hey, be in charge, huh? Yeah, and I know that it was, uh, I like I knew it was such the right thing to happen. Yes. Um, and it was a blessing in disguise because I got laid off on Friday. Yes. I got my next uh, design project on Monday. Wow. So technically I was only without work for a few days. <laughs> wow, so was it like a good good one, this one? Yeah, huh? and it was uh, easy, so I was able, able to easily transition financially yeah. as well. Nice. And, um, so I did that for a little while in Tennessee, but I was also just kind of um, at a place where I was ready to expand and I knew that I was just ready for something else. And then the opportunity presented itself for me to work at Omega. And um, Yeah, I was gonna ask you that, to like, yeah, tell us a little bit more about working at the Omega Institute because, man, that's an amazing institute. Yes. All the gurus have been there, you mm -hmm. know, all these guys, the Wayne Dyers go there, yeah. uh, Panash Desai, they go there. I'm not sure about Oprah, uh, mm -hmm. if she's been to Omega, I think she has. I mean, yeah. the, the really big, big people, big spiritual beings are coming yeah, in children. there. Yeah. And I can't <laughs> wait myself to go there. They are sending me these invitation for the um, retreats there every year. Mm -hmm. uh, every, every time there is, uh, uh, retreats and I'm like gosh I want to please universe make me go there I want to go to <laughs> Omega Institute so bad mm -hmm. and meeting you and you've been to Omega Institute and shaking the hands of these big spiritual gurus can you tell me exactly how that made you how that changed you moving into Omega and and all the way to moving from there to I just want to understand what did Omega do to you how did it change you it was one of the best things I've ever done in my entire life. Nice. Um, so I signed up to work there as a full-time staff member, which meant that I would be there basically from April until November. Mm -hmm. And it's a big commitment that you make, mm -hmm. um, and it's all about compassionate service. Yes, and so and Yes, and so I worked in a dining hall while I was there, worked 40 hours a week, and um, I also was a part of uh, an art guild, um, and got to do some really amazing workshops. Yes. Um, I got certified to do Thai yoga massage while I was there. Mm. Um, but the thing that, um, like the most significant aspect for me was just the amount of self work. And uh, one of the one of my managers said that, uh, you know, you can do a lot of workshops while you're at Omega, yes. but working there is your workshop. Because um, you're affected by um, the amazing, yeah gurus and teachers that come, but also the people that are coming there for healing. Yes, um, and when and they leave, they're healed. That changes you, huh? Mm -hmm. like, and what? you can just feel the energy, energy from everyone. Like I remember when the 13 indigenous grandmothers were there, mm -hmm. they had a fire ceremony and yes. they had a fire that burned the whole time that they were there. And how could you not feel that energy and just like the love mm, that- Give uh, me goosebumps, I'm just yeah. wanting it right yeah. now, man. I'm like, oh, can yeah. we go there now? Yes. <laughs> 
<laughs> and, and I remember um, one of my friends, we were working in a dining hall, yes. and you know, it's pretty, pretty hard work. It can yes. be pretty hard work. And you're on your feet, and yes. uh, sometimes we're literally serving thousands of people Especially in the summers, I guess that's when, mm -hmm. I don't know what time is more busy. Maybe any time, it doesn't matter it's, really. It's, yeah, because it's a too. seasonal place, so okay. it's, it stays pretty busy. And certain events, you know, the attendance can be, you know, several thousand. Some events, you know, the, yes. the attendance can be 900. Yeah. But still, there's a lot of people. Yeah, and so a lot of stomachs lot to feed there. Yes. Breakfast, lunch, <laughs> and dinner. And there's something in between. <laughs> yeah, and it was just like working in the dining hall itself yes. was just beautiful because uh, we all had uh, it was like a family style meal yes. everyone ate together oh. um, you know whether or not you were attending whether or not you were teaching whether or not you're a staff member we all held space all together the same. there's no yeah. looking say oh that is the teacher there oh, mm -hmm. you can sit with teachers we all uh, one people yes you know, right yes wow um, is there anything more you might want to who, who, well, who were the best gurus that you met in Omega that I can't really well, I was, um, so this was, so to talk about the grandmothers again, because yes. this was something really special that happened was, um, this was the last day that the 13 indigenous grandmothers were gonna be at Omega. Mm -hmm. And um, my friend and I, we were working in a dining hall, we were working that evening, and we were both just really tired, mm -hmm. and you know, you get, what do you call it, slap happy, and just kinda, <laughs> we're silly and we're just kinda laughing, but yeah. we were still doing our work, but yeah. we had a smile on our face. And um, I wasn't aware that we were being watched. And so by the grandmothers, and they oh. were being amused by us being amused while we were doing our work. Oh. And so one of the grandmothers came over and she, um, actually she was like, you know, we've been watching you all and observing how much fun you're having. Oh. And she's like, and just the beautiful smiles that you have on your face, she's like, it's bringing me so much joy. Oh, that's so sweet. And she Wait. asked if she could give us a blessing. Goodness, see, you smile, the blessings come. <laughs> you know, you you get that kind of whatever gets worse, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So tell me the, about these grandmothers. Are they uh, like Native American mm -hmm. elders? Yes. Wonderful, yes. wonderful. I didn't yeah. know that one. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, I'll have to send you some information. On oh that. man, yes. I can wait to explore you more because yes. there's a <laughs> lot. We yes. just met and. Um, We're just, just scratching just, the surface. I'm just so excited. I mean, you know, this universe is doing it. Mm -hmm. It's gr bringing us together, you know, just like I was saying earlier that mm -hmm. we are actually uh, puzzles, you know. Mm -hmm. Every human being on here, we're just w one puzzle. Yes. But this puzzle is scattered around. Mm -hmm. We just need to find ourselves, how to bring ourselves back to put together. that puzzle together, mm -hmm. you know? Like when I was saying how uh, people in here really are, are helping us out, mm -hmm. and we just need to, to see that they are part of the puzzle that makes us, right now being here in front of the yeah. screen is because there's volunteers that are brought in their energy and, um, you know, and their expertise, because mm -hmm. we have the story. They know what how to run that, that stuff behind there. We really need each other. So their puzzle coming here makes this happen. Now the audience is gonna get to see and hear these beautiful stories from us. And um, so anyway. We're all um, help spreading the bliss. Exactly, you know? exactly. So, wow, wonderful. Let me see here um, if we can talk a little bit more about um, your, your artwork. So uh, during, maybe during Omega, when you yes. were still in there, you can yeah. tell me maybe about when you were still in there and after moving from there. Okay, so, um, so you, like I said, you're doing a lot of internal work. Um, one thing that a lot of people, including myself, didn't really think about mm -hmm. is um, how your life changes when you're removed from technology. In our culture, we're so plugged in, oh, yeah. you know, like we have our cell phones, Ooh. like, and just, just even as simple as trying to make plans. If I wanna make plans with you, you know, our first line is uh, to text or maybe call yeah. or send Facebook. If you want to see someone at Mega, you walk to where they live or you walk to where they work exactly. because you can't text them, you can't call them. 
Um, and this was really beautiful, but at first it was yeah. really challenging for me. And, and we, with me, I resonate with that mm -hmm. because I grew up in Africa mm -hmm. and I grew up in the countryside. Mm. We didn't have no cell phone. We didn't have, <laughs> no, I'm not talking cell phone. Yeah. We had no electricity to plug mm. in even an old phone. We yes. didn't have any electricity. We didn't have running water. We didn't have a car. Mm -hmm. You know, if you owned a donkey cart, you know, a scotch cart, we call them. And, um, you know, you were even better. You were yeah. like, oh my God. So if we wanted to, to uh, take message from one village to the other, mm -hmm. you have to run, wake up early at three and start going. Yeah. You know, that's how it is. Walk all night. For weeks that's how we did it mm -hmm. and so and then I come in, in now you know unfortunately I, I'm starting to whine oh my gosh my phone is not working oh my gosh I can't do this I'm, you know and it's just it's whining really and yeah, we, we're yeah. just moving ourselves back from uh, uh, you know actually um, awakening more to mm -hmm. realize what we, we, we really are we are strong without all that stuff you yes know, we are more powerful without this exactly. stuff is there to put ours our brains our everything in there it's sucking our energy mm -hmm. and we are lost we are lost in these things and I see people walking it's like zombies yeah people don't talk and just like real forms of connection you know are yeah. lost because of technology exactly. you know like it's an unnecessary filter which a lot of people think are necessary you know I'm like we don't need this filter, go directly to the source. And, and so Omega, you know, that was one of the things is like, we were removed from technology and, and in that you, um, you know, how do you spend your time when you're not working? Yes. What are your outlets? And so um, one of my outlets was to create art. And there was a group of my, you know, coworkers and group of friends mm -hmm. um, that we all, just it just happened organically we started uh getting together after we all got off work yes. and uh this group consisted of you know people writing music people writing poetry somebody painting you yes. know somebody drawing and we all just held creative space together wow. and i was also um dealing with some heart issues you know mm -hmm. i was had broken up with someone yeah. and and so um you know, I started started journaling. I bought a journal before I went to Omega and I started writing. Yes. But that didn't feel right for me. Yeah. You know, it's a beautiful outlet for some people, but I quickly went from writing to just drawing. And uh, I was doing a lot of work in my heart chakra. And so what I started doing is each drawing, I would start with the heart. Nice. And, um, and then I would go into like a meditative process and just let the artwork develop itself. itself yes. I was not attached to an outcome. It was just all about the process. And that's something that I started doing every evening. Nice. And the more I was drawing these hearts and doing these drawings, the more my heart chakra was healing mm. and expanding. Nice. And it was interesting because the artwork started out really small yeah. and black and white, and then it like grew. And I started adding color to it, nice. and yeah, it was like I could see, yes. yeah, how my heart was really expanding. Wonderful, and I call it colors of beauty. Actually, mm. I have a chapter of that, and um, so l let's see now. Then you move from Omega to Portland. Yes, and then what happened? So um, one thing that was interesting is I moved to Portland without ever visiting Portland. Did you know anybody here? I knew people here, okay. yes. Um, and I was originally planning on moving to Seattle. I love the Pacific Northwest, Yes. but something about Portland was pulling, pulling me in. And then as I was on my search, looking for you know places to live, like things kept coming up for Portland, Portland. Yes. And then when I made the decision to at least try Portland, everything lined up perfectly nice. so I was like okay this is this is it, this is it. Yeah. and I so love it here too I love it I love it here yeah. too the, my first year was difficult though oh, yeah. uh, so I'm I traveled um, I basically after Omega um, I spent about three weeks traveling across the country visiting friends along the way uh, ended up in Portland and I've been here since Yes. Um, but the first year was very challenging. Mm -hmm. um, I had a very strong community mm -hmm. in, you know, a yoga community, but also like a friends and family community yes. in Tennessee that I had left behind. And so I felt a little bit like a fish out of water when yeah. I first moved here. Even though I had a few friends, I was still like missing that community that I had left on the East Coast. And um, also one thing that happened too was, interesting enough, um, some things lined up perfectly yes. uh, with related to art, but with housing, <laughs> yeah. I, um, 
ended up moving, you know, several times, like the first year I was here yes. and was feeling ungrounded. Yeah. And um, that was the first time in about 13 years that I had taken a hiatus from yoga. And yeah. it was, um, you know, I was like, how can I go to yoga? I need to find a place to live. How can I go to yoga? Oh, you know, okay. I need this and this and this. But that's really when you should be practicing yoga. Exactly. That's when you need yeah. it. Because it's going to connect you exactly to yeah. that. The universe is going to say, oh, okay, you're here, and I know you want to go here. Go here. Here yeah. it is. But you, because humans, you know, as humans, we we try to you work at, at a human level instead of at a spirit level, mm -hmm. and we, we, we forget. We're trying to, we think we can do it ourselves yes. instead of giving and just relax and and and, and, and um what do you call it surrender surrender with, and with, trusting yeah. in spirit and yes. like you know knowing that it's gonna just knowing and trusting is gonna be okay yes and also just like the need that your mind can sometimes have to control everything and it was like no it needs to go exactly like this you know and yes. so um i stopped practicing yoga mm -hmm. for the first time in like 14 years. Yeah. And also, um, I became creatively stifled for the first time yep. that it I happens. can remember. And so I started to think, okay, maybe these things are connected. Of course, <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I mean, I know that now, but I at know, the time I, I was time. like, I might be onto something here. And so I actually um, made myself a priority and yes. made getting back on my mat a priority and so I started exploring, Portland is great because there's so many yoga studios yes. and there's lots of introductory packets. And so I started doing a little tour of different studios. Yes. And then I found a studio that immediately, it felt like home. Nice. Immediately it felt like home. Which one is it? I want to go there too. Uh, yoga Boga. <laughs> okay. Wait, is Yoga Boga in, in Northeast or Southeast? Southeast. Okay, mm -hmm. I don't know, okay. Yeah, I think they had a previous location before okay. I moved to Portland, but but yeah, it's um, it's the community um, that I was looking for. Yes. I made some of my most significant friendships at the studio, oh, and definitely. really was able to get back into my practice. And this was pretty amazing because literally right after I started getting back into my practice mm -hmm. at Yoga Boga, mm -hmm. I was inspired and actually went home and started created like one of the first pieces of artwork that I had mm -hmm. made in after having a year hiatus. I see, so, so here uh, you, you, you're now telling us, you know, was that this is the time you're realizing my spirituality and art are one. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, we don't have more, as much um, time left, but I would love to hear that part where, what, what do you see about the relationship between your art and spirituality, if you can tell us. So basically um, yoga is something that uh, has provided um, you know, me spiritual growth as well as uh, on a physical level, on an emotional level, like yoga has just um, really enhanced my life in so many ways. Mm -hmm. um, also meditation yes. and also artwork. And um, yoga itself, just the, you know, I find a human body to be very beautiful and very fascinating mm -hmm. and the shapes that we can make, yes. um, either doing yoga or acro yoga, um, mm -hmm. I also find that very inspiring. And so a lot of my work artwork has taken on, um, you know, I have a lot of artwork that has yoga as a subject matter yes, and I content see, to it. Yes, I those, yes. We'll, yeah. we'll be showing those, actually, yeah. so. <laughs> yeah. Let's look at some of your artwork here, Shanita. I love this one. It's called Inspirational Love, and just looking at it makes my chakras feel so balanced and happy. And I love this one, too. It's, it was made for a private residence um, it looks like it's an indoor mural. Really beautiful stuff, Shanita, really beautiful. And this one is from the Alberta Healing Arts Center. Amazing work, amazing creativity there, Shanita. Grounded in love, I love this one. To me, it says, the world is so heavy for me. And a friend says, not when you are with friends, honey, I can help you. Oh, look at this one, so much energy on it. And the colors, I just love the way you mix those colors, Shanita. Amazing stuff you have. And look at that one. Wow. So it's ocean meets night sky. Amazing, amazing stuff. And one of my favorite ones is called In Your Eyes. I see the eye filled with love. I mean, why? how can someone not see love in the eyes of somebody who's filled with love? And we, we don't have much time, mm -hmm. but um, I would love uh, for us to kind of uh, 
hear a little bit about you you offer some classes of some sort for free in the community can you s tell us about that a little bit and then i have one more question for you after that okay um so i've been given the opportunity to um by a association called community supported everything mm -hmm. um, and what they do is they have different uh, events and different workshops to enhance the community and give back to the community. Yes. And I was asked to um, if I wanted to contribute something and I immediately jumped on it. And where is that? I want to go too. Tell us. Uh, it's it's uh, 1626 uh, Northeast Alberta Street. at. Uh, Which one is it? What is it called? It's called uh, Community Supported Everything at the Guild Hall. Oh. Yes. I see. And My so, house was right there on 14th and Sumner. On oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. And and when, so <laughs> when they were little, the boys. <laughs> so yeah, we, I would love to. We would love to come and check those out. But can you tell us really? We, we are closing already. Uh, your future plans and what you want the um, you know the viewers to, to to you know to hear from. I mean, just your plans yeah. and whatever. Yeah. So um, my plans are just to continue to just uh, you know not be small yes. and just to continue to expand and grow and to yes. radiate. Um, the light that I've been given because I do believe that my creativity is a God-given talent and that's something that my grandfather actually encouraged me to do when right before he passed away was to continue to pursue my God-given talent Wonderful. and so um, yeah so my plans are just to continue um, expanding and sharing my artwork and hopefully inspiring other people um, I'm collaborating on a children's book that right. basically talks about the connection with that we're all connected. Yes. You know, people, animals, everything. everything. Um, and so that's going to be a beautiful project that I'm working on. And um, I recently got a uh, commission to do two, two murals in Nashville, Tennessee. So I'm going to be going back there next wow. month. And that, that's where you came from, right? Uh, that's kind that's, of. Yeah. Okay, wonderful. Yeah. Wow. Anyway, I mean, we wish you all the best. I mean, you. Um, you are an amazing being. We just didn't have enough time to really cover <laughs> you because you are, you are big. So we'll bring you again, you know, thank sometime you, soon. You. And so we can get to know more about, you know, your, your trip to Nashville and the book and all, all this kind of stuff. Thank, thank you. you so much, uh, Shanita. It was really great to have you in our TV. Thank you so much for watching, viewers. Um, um, this is Loveness Paradise TV. We'll see you again next time and have a blessed one. Mm -hmm.